As always here on In Touch on this Sunday, great to have Dr. Sharon Gaber with us here, University of Toledo president. What do you do when you have summer months? You talk about school, right? Exactly, Why not? Yes. Why not? We wanted to start our conversation talking about lessons and leadership. And first and foremost, we want to put out congratulations to you, extending your contract with the university, staying on for a little while longer. Talk a little bit about that, your feelings behind it, and also the mission that you see going forward. Right. Well, I certainly appreciate the board support. And uh, what I tell you is it's we've built a great team at the university, the faculty, the staff, the students. Everybody has dug in. We've made progress in enrollment, and we've made progress in ACT scores, and we've made progress in fundraising and our research dollars. And, you know, so we're moving in the right direction. We've put together a strategic plan, mm -hmm. and I'm just... Gr grateful to have that support and excited about what we're going to do in the future. And a vote of confidence, I think you have to look at it right. that way as far as what the board sees you doing, correct? Absolutely. And and I, you know, they spend time looking into what are some of the successes and getting feedback from different constituent groups to make sure that they understand yeah. the impressions of, you know, how things are going at the university. So I am very appreciative of their support. We've seen a lot of building going on, uh, taking place on the campus. There's a lot of uh, research, great research that comes out each mm -hmm. and every year. I want to talk about something that happened specifically with over the last couple of weeks, and that was Narcan training that went on for faculty and staff members and some students taking part as well. Naloxone, as we've told mm -hmm. you there at home, talking about that, reversing uh, the effects of an overdose as far as opiates are concerned. I, I see this as a proactive move, obviously, but talk about how it resonated with you on doing something like this on a college campus. Right. Well, so the intention was uh, bring together our researchers, our faculty, our staff who have interests in this area. We put together an opioid task force this past year. Mm -hmm. That group has worked with researchers across campus. What are projects that we can be involved with? What are things we can do in the community? And when they talked about bringing that to campus, 210 people signed up. So now we have 210 people that are throughout Ohio mm -hmm. and that are able to help in the event of an emer emergency. So for us, I think it's one more step in being great community members and thinking about how do we assist. And so we had, I, you know, I went to the training. So yeah. first of all, I learned what, what you go through, but we had medical students, we had uh, faculty members, we had uh, members of our recre recreation campus rec. So it was just a really broad um, display of mm -hmm. individuals coming out and wanting to be a part and to help our broader community. And maybe it's naive on my part, obviously, tunnel vision as far as what's happening here in Northwest Ohio. Is this something that they're doing on campuses around the country because that's the times we're living in right now? Yeah, no, I don't really think it is. So uh, historically, and our campus police has have been carrying mm -hmm. that, but to do a broader training, the intention really was to say, we want to be a leader, we want to be a participant, and we want to make sure our campus community recognizes this is an issue in our broader region. So each of the individuals, and again, 210 individuals, yeah. are going to be spread out throughout the community. And I think that's fantastic to look at what are the signs, what do you do, make sure that you're not harming the individual, how do you tip them to their side, or this sort of thing. So I mean, all of that was very interesting. And, and I think as a parent, it's good to know. And it's good to know because of not only your own kids, but your kids' friends or others or, you right. know, this sort of thing. So it's important information, and it's not something you know, as I was growing up, that you necessarily learned. Well, so, I'll tell you what, yeah. my parents say, they say to me again and again, they're like, I, I would not want to be raising your kids in this day right. and age with right. all of the things like that. But obviously a little proactive of a stance as far as the Narcan is concerned, but hoping we never get to that point. Once again, talking with Dr. Sharon Gamer, University of Toledo president, lessons and leadership. I want to talk a little bit about the gift of the Well Tower property, which sits just across the street from yes, us here yes. at uh, uh, 13 ABC, but also down the street from university and where things stand with that right now so that gift is is going forward they are in the process well tower is of moving their employees from the front building to the back building we have not yet taken possession of the property or the building we anticipate early fall and i don't know if that's september october time that we so just would, a few months away yeah, yeah. I, I anticipate that we would take possession we're planning on that and thinking about you know what would we want to do there our intention is to move our division of advanced 
enhancement. So that is alumni association development, special events, communication and marketing, the UT Foundation, move that to this location. It gives us an opportunity when you think about almost an alumni center or being able to do sure. events. It's a lovely venue to be able to do so that. So more but, administrative on that property? Because uh, I know there was some yeah. question initially. It was like, yeah. well, will, they, will there be, is there enough parking for students to show up yeah. there and take classes? Yeah, I, I don't think that's the intention. And in part, keep in mind for undergrads, they have a number of other classes, so it would be commuting sure. back and forth. We have had graduate programs who have said, well, I could be self-sufficient there. I think in the short term our plan is to utilize it for administrative and to be able to share that as a venue for events with alumni and with development so possibly yeah. by the fall though we could see some branding out on front of those signs and see well, ut's name well probably mid-fall yeah. yes, right. yes. So, something obviously exciting there yeah. in our final minutes uh, i wanted to ask you and kind of talk with the mission going forward and obviously when you look at your to-do list and think okay i've got a little more time here with the university what are some of those things on the checklist you think are, are easily done with uh, over the next year possibly? Ooh, okay. Well, there's there's a lot to continue to yeah. do, and that's the exciting thing is we've made progress. We put together a strategic plan a year. Go. So we will continue to follow the strategic plan. Some of that includes facilities. So we have a campus master plan and a strategic plan. We have to continue to help. Is UT a dated campus as far as the buildings are concerned, you think? Uh, when you look at where the kids are taking the kids, yeah. listen to me, yeah. the young adults are taking their classes and things like that. We have continued to renovate the interiors of our facilities. I mean, we keep the exteriors looking sort of classic ar architecture, sure. but most of our rooms now, we continue to make them smart rooms. We are continuing to work on that and we'll, we'll do more in the next yeah. several years. So we want to keep up with what students need in terms of having technology in the classroom. And more and more classes are hybrid so that they're doing things both online and in the classroom. And I think, you know, students today expect that. They sure. don't expect to go to a class and have a chalkboard and that that's the way information is going to be conveyed to them. Right. So we'll continue to renovate. We'll, we'll continue to work on enrollment. We have been up, and that was after six years of enrollment decline. We'll continue to assess our offerings and think about, are there programs that we should be offering that we are not currently? And I know one that we're looking at at cybersecurity. I think there are a few others that we continue to look at and say, uh, are these majors that we should be offering? And then we're going to continue to think about what does the infrastructure look like yeah. and follow that campus master plan. We had talked previously, and you know, you've probably heard about moving away from Scott Park. Mm -hmm. And that's an asset that the university has. We continue to think about how might we best utilize that asset and help the community with that. So. Finally, as a community Community member yourself here the last few years and uh, I guess the, the the authority that UT holds within the community and the name and the moniker what do you see Toledo doing right right now and what would you like to see happen as far as the city is concerned going forward well I'll I think it's an exciting time to be in Toledo. When I got here just over three years ago, the downtown didn't look like it does now, and I can see what has happened and the changes that have occurred. So I think it's a fantastic change, and we continue to make progress as a city, and I'm excited to be a part of that. Is it better for you? Is it a better pipeline for those <laughs> students to possibly go to school here and then stay here? Absolutely, and think about the arrangement that we made this year to work with TARDA now as our bus service provider, right. our students wanted the opportunity to go downtown. They now have that opportunity. They have the opportunity to go to shopping and to downtown and to restaurants and bars and this sort of thing. And it's great for yes. our students. And, and having the downtown sort of revitalized, we want to continue that revitalization, have it go down, you know, Monroe, down Bancroft and, and come and connect with us and we're excited to be a part of that and I'll point out we are working with the city on Rocket Pride and the city will have a big event sort of the first the week before the first home football game to point out Rocket Pride and we're excited about that. There you go you heard it here first yeah. uh, I will uh, take great pride in that. Doctor good Excellent. to see you as Thank always you we much. appreciate it.